polynomial functions. A polynomial function has what appears to be a rather complicated format just because of all the subscripts and exponents you see. But if I just show you what these mean for a second, each of the A's has a subscript in it. The A refers to the coefficient. The little subscript refers to which term it's the coefficient of. And that little subscript is the same as the exponent with the variable. In this form, we have the exponents going in descending order. The first term has the largest exponent in it. We typically prefer for polynomials to be written in this standard form because this first term here is the leading, considered to be the leading term of the polynomial. And it gives us a lot of information about the polynomial. The coefficient of that term is called the leading coefficient. And the exponent that's with the variable is called the degree. Now, because polynomial functions are just a bunch of terms where we have x raised to a power, we don't have anything that we have to be careful about. So the domain is always going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. So let's look at a couple of polynomial functions and, and determine what the degree and the leading coefficients are. This first function is 3x to the fifth minus 6x to the fourth plus 8x squared minus 1. Here, the exponents are in descending order. So the first term is the one we use to determine the degree. The degree of the polynomial is 5, because it's the largest exponent we have with the variable. The coefficient of that term is 3, so the leading coefficient is 3. The second example is not in descending order. If we were to write it in descending order, it would be f of x equals negative 4 sevenths x plus 3. So that means the degree here is 1, because this x is to the first power. This is a polynomial function, but it's a special polynomial function. It also can be called a linear function. The leading coefficient of the first term is the negative 4 sevenths. The last polynomial here, the order is all mixed up. If we were to put it in descending order, the first term would be the one with the largest exponent. So that would be the negative x to the seventh power. Then the next largest exponent is the x squared. So I would put plus 5x squared. Then the next would be that minus x. And then finally, the last term would be plus 3. So my leading term is this negative x to the seventh power. So my uh, degree is 7, and my leading coefficient is negative 1. Now, when your degree, I'm going to keep my calculator out of the way here, when the degree of your function is even, in other words, you have an x squared as your highest power, the graph is, uh, is going to have a similar shape to any polynomial with an even degree. What we know about even degrees is that the ends of the graph are both going to go in the same direction. If the a, the leading coefficient, is greater than 0 or positive, then the end behavior of your graph is that it's going to be rising. This is kind of like the standard parabola. You know, your standard parabola, y equals x squared, the degree is 2, and the leading coefficient is positive. 
and both of the ends of the graph are going up. If your A is negative, both of the ends of your graph are going to be going down. So that would just be kind of the upside down parabola there. If Y equals a negative X squared, both of the tails would be going down. When your function has an odd power, as that highest power, then each end of your graph is going to go in a different direction. If your A is positive, A is greater than zero, then your graph is going to fall to the left and rise to the right. In other words, your first tail is going to go down. Where you have negative X's, you're going to have the negative Y's going down. And the second tail is going to go up. So as your X's go up, your Y's are going to go up. Now what, what goes on in the middle here, we don't really know too much about. It might do that, it might do that, it might do woo, woo. But we know the first tail goes down, the second tail goes up. If your A is negative, then it's going to look just the opposite of that. The first tail would be going up, and the second tail would be going down. We don't know much about what goes on in the middle. We just know about the end behavior of the graph. So let's look at a couple of graphs here. Here we have a polynomial, the graph of a polynomial function. And I want to look at the turning points of our graph. The turning points of the graph happen at the places where the graph changes directions. If you look at this graph, you always read a graph from left to right. The graph goes up, and then we have a high point here, and then it starts, it turns and starts going down. So this is a turning point. It goes down until you get to here. This is a turning point, and then it goes up until it gets to here. This is a turning point and then it starts going down. So this graph has three turning points. Think of those as the hills and the valleys. Remember the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this has three x-intercepts, or where it touches the x-axis, I should say. And those points are Let's see, this would be the point negative 1, 0. This would be the point positive 1, 0. And this would be the point positive 2, 0. The minimum degree and whether or not A is positive, whether A is positive or negative, are determined by the shape of the graph and what the ends are doing. Here, notice that this graph is going, both points are going down. Both ends are going down. So that tells us that it must have an even degree. But we also know that if we have three x-intercepts, it has to have at least a third power with your x. So if x has to have a degree that's greater than 3, I'm just going to say 3 plus here. It's got to be bigger than 3, 3 or higher. And it has to be even. The smallest degree we could have here would be 4. And because both our tails are going down, we know that the a would have to be less than zero. Let's look at one more. The number of turning points we have on this graph. We have one turning point here and one turning point here. So we have two turning points. We have one, two, three x-intercepts. I can't really tell exactly what those points are this, from this graph. I can't tell exactly what the ordered pairs are, but I know there are three x-intercepts on this graph. The 
the minimum degree, let's see, if it needs to be even or odd, I've got one tail going up and I've got one tail going down. So that means it has to have an odd degree. If I have three x-intercepts, the minimum degree is going to have to be three because three is odd. To determine whether the A is negative or positive, we look at what the tails are doing. Here the first tail is the one that goes up. It's the one that's high in the air. So if it's the first tail that goes up, that means your A is negative. So A would be less than zero. Just a general note here. The number of turning points can be no more than one less than the degree of the function. And the number of x-intercepts can be no more than the degree. So if we go back and look here, this example, the number of turning points was three and the degree was four. So it was one less than the degree. If we look at this one, the turning points, there were two, and the degree was three. The minimum degree was three. So it was one less than the minimum degree. And the number of x-intercepts can't be any larger than the degree either. So we got that satisfied on both problems. <laughs>